Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. We're glad this evening that we're able to come back and share with you the love of God in Christ Jesus. I don't know of a friend that's any better or could be any better to you than Jesus can. I thank God. I've got a lot of friends. I thank God for yeah. all of them. And my prayer is that God would just reach down and touch you and bless you. Your heart would be lifted up. Your spirit would be rejoicing. And you can know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that's what it's going to take to get us to heaven is to know that our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus paid a price that he didn't know. He paid a debt that he didn't know. We owed a debt that we couldn't pay. Jesus paid it on Calvary. Yeah. And I thank God that he was willing to say yes. Yes, Father, I'll go. I'll live a perfect life. And I will redeem lost humanity from the curse of the law. I'll set them free if they'll come to me. Hey, well... And so you see, that's what it takes. Whenever we come to Jesus, we repent of our sins and we pick up our cross and we follow after Him daily. He didn't say once a week or once, ever, once or twice a year. He says daily. It's seven days a week, 24 hours a day. My, that we dedicate our lives to the Lord, to the furtherance of the gospel of Christ, to do what we can my for lost humanity. And truly, there's a lot of people out there that are lost. And I want you to know that God loves you. God loves you unconditionally. <laughs> and so today's the day of salvation. If you want to be saved, all you got to do is submit yourself to Jesus. Now, you don't have to pray like I do, but you can say, Lord Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I have no hope beyond this veil of tears. I want you to forgive me my sins. Come into my heart. Lead me down life's highway in a way that I can understand. Honey, you'd be surprised what the Spirit of God will do for you. Uh, why? Because He says, It's not my will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We thank God today for all of those that I stand behind us and praise and seeks the face of God in our behalf. And so I'm glad today that Jesus loves you. I'm glad that He loves you. My, my, even more than you can comprehend. Why? Because there's a lot of times we think, my, how could God love somebody like me? Somebody that had done all the things that I've done. Somebody that have taken the name of the Lord God in vain, as I have. How could God love somebody like me? You know, the songwriter says, He looks beyond my faults, and He saw my needs. Woo! <laughs> well, praise God. He looked beyond my fault, and He saw my needs. And so you see, I needed a Savior. He was the Savior that I needed. And He came and He made His abode within my heart. You see, I opened the door and let Him come in. That's what you got to do. Open the door and let Him come in. Give Him an invitation. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Clean me up. Clean me out. My because we can't do nothing to earn salvation. We can't do nothing to earn salvation. We like to think we can. We like to think, well, now I'm not too bad. I, I, I keep the commandments. I'm honest. And I, I do that which is right. I help my neighbors. That's not good enough. You, what do you mean? I mean, you've got to repent. Um, why? Because there's a lot of times we have dirty, filthy thoughts that comes to our mind. You remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, whenever you look up on one of the opposite sex and you lust after them, you've committed adultery already in your heart. <laughs> and so you see, he said, 
the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, my, the pride of life. He said, that's not of God. That's of the world. You see, that's what we've got to fight. What? The lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the lust after the things of this old world. You see, if we're not careful, we'll be wanting those things out there. We'll want them bad enough that sometimes we, we would take them, we would steal them if we thought we wouldn't get caught. <coughs> but you see, the thing of it is, God says, thou shalt not steal. Mm -hmm. And whenever you do it in your heart, you see, we, there's where it comes from. We do it there first before we ever reach out with our hands. And so you see, it's time that we repent. And look to Jesus because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He gives us salvation full and free. But my, it's up to us to walk in the light. The light that we have. And you see, the more light that we get, the closer our walk is with God. And we're able to feel his power and his spirit. Well, praise God. My, we would thank everybody for being with us, helping us out, standing by us in time of need. The encouragement that we get, it means a lot. And so we just praise God. And because God is merciful to us. It's nothing good that we can do, nothing good that we have done. We can't earn it. It's by the grace of God. Amen. And so I, I thank God every day for His grace. Yeah. I thank God every day for His mercy. I thank God every day that they don't reward me according to my sins and my iniquities. <laughs> I know you say, well, you mean you repent every day? Yeah, I do. Yes, I do. Why? Uh, because as I said, there's sometimes there's those thoughts, you see, uh, that comes to your mind. Uh, and I, I like the old saying, you know, you can't keep the bird from flying over the bush, but you don't have to let him build a nest. <laughs> and so you see, you, though you can't keep those thoughts from coming to your mind. You don't have to dwell on them. Whenever they come there, now you can put the blood of Jesus on your mind to cover yourself, you see, with the blood of Jesus Christ. That sets you free. Woo. Well, I feel the preacher. <laughs> my, my. And I praise God today for His mercy and for His grace uh, that He lifts us up uh, and He wants us to go forth not in our strength, not in our power, but in the demonstrations of the Spirit. You just see the Spirit wants us to walk in Him. And so we praise God today. We want to pray with you and pray for you that uh, God would just reach down there and touch you. Uh, uh, if you're sick, you're afflicted, ask God. You see, I tell people the Scripture works if you work it. Uh -huh. But a lot of times you say, we don't work it. Why? Because we don't really believe it. We, we think, well, now God would do it for somebody else, but He wouldn't do it for me. Honey, if God would do it for me, He'd do it for anybody. Well, praise God. <laughs> you see, I got confidence in God that He's not going to turn nobody away. He said, whosoever will, let them come to the fountains of living water and drink freely. If you've never had a drink from the fountain of God, you've never drank anything yet as sweet and as pure and, and tastes as good as, as what it does. And so, Father, as we call upon you today, we thank you for another opportunity that we have to come back one more time to the TV station. Let our voice ring out across the airways and tell people about the good things of God. How that you come to seek and to save those that were lost. How that you set the captives free. How you delivered those that were in prison. How you made the lame to walk again. Open blind eyes that they could see. And so today, Heavenly <coughs> Father, that you would bless our voices that they ring out across their ways. People 
people's heart to be touched. And God, their faith would be enlarged and they would be able to believe for a healing in their bodies, for a healing, Heavenly Father, in their spirit. And God, a healing in their soul, in their mind. And so we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing today. And God, we realize that there's many, Heavenly Father, that are sick about the greatest sickness that we have today. And God is sin sickness. And I pray, Father, for every lost person that's there. And God, that they feel the touch of the mighty hand of God upon their hearts, their lives. And God, they would have a yearning to turn to you while there's still time and an opportunity. Father, bless the service today. Bless Roscoe and Wilda. Father, as they stand and sing uh, the songs of Zion. And God, it would be a blessing uh, to those that are there. Now, Father, uh, I'll be around about those that have made it possible uh, for us to be here. Uh, and God, to lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, and we'll praise you and thank you for it. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Well, praise the name of the Lord. All right, Roscoe and Wilder are going to come and sing for us a little bit. Well, we've both been under the weather for the past couple of weeks. Last week we couldn't make it because I was sick. And Roscoe came down with it this... About three days ago. Yeah, so he's... We're both still a little froggy, so just bear with us if we can't hit these notes right. All right, you going to sing with us? <clears throat> it's called Where We'll Never Grow Old. I have heard of a land on the faraway strand. Tis a beautiful home of the soul. Built by Jesus on high, there we never shall die. Tis a land where we'll never grow Praise to the King Through eternity sing Tis a land where we'll never shall die Never Troubles and trials 
sorrow All our sorrows will end And our voices shall blend Is a home where we'll never go Never That's a good promise, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, well, you know, I've been studying on the great prophets, Brother Earl, honorable mention, as he calls them, uh, great prophets of Elijah and Eliza and Isaiah. And then if we're in the New Testament, the Lord referred his prophecy by them three old prophets by mentioning them through his apostles. And uh, I love to study the Bible. It gives me an outlook on life and what we're looking forward to. Yeah. And so I've come to, we'll sing a, you know, we're in the key of F and sing what he's going to be promising us. What he's been talking about and what I've been studying about. Coming soon, Jesus, in all his glory, not as a savior. But as a reigning king Coming soon The whole world will be a witness All oh, be ready For he is coming soon coming soon first he came to this world of sin and sorrow as a babe in a manger in Bethlehem now when he comes again he'll reign with all his power great kings will bow and worship his great name Coming soon The whole world will be a witness Not as a savior But as a reigning king Coming soon The whole world will be a witness All be ready For he is coming soon when he comes again, he'll bind the power of Satan. Little children with the lamb and lion will play. This old world will be filled with all his goodness. All oh, be ready, for he is coming soon. Coming soon to the world of sorrow. Not as a savior, but as a reigning king. Coming soon to this world of sin and sorrow. 
all be ready for he is coming soon all be ready for he is coming soon Bless his name. Praise God. I am so glad for the goodness and the greatness of God. That God's merciful to us, keeps his hand upon us, and he helps us. I, I wanted to ask everybody to remember uh, a, a dear friend that passed away. Had his funeral service today, Brother Clyde Miller, down around Weston. And so remember the home, the remember the family, that God would just reach down and touch them. You know, when we lose a friend, a loved one, my, it's never the same. There's always something missing. And so we thank God for him, for the life that he lived. Been in church with him many, many, many times. And so I, I praise God for His mercy and for His grace. And so this evening for a little while, we want to look into some scripture found uh, in the book, book of Proverbs. In the 14th chapter, he said, The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous has hope in his death. You see, where does, what does a wicked man have to look forward to? Whenever he leaves this world, he has no hope beyond the grave. And I know I talk to a lot of people and they say, well, I, when you die, that's it. You better hope that's it. But it's not. Why? Because the Bible says that one of these days there's a judgment of coming. Uh -huh. and, and everybody is going to be there. Everybody that's unsaved is going to stand uh, uh, before the white throne judgment of God. And, and they're all is going to be listened to him say, Sorry, I never knew you. You see, but the righteous has hope in their death. They know that their name is written in the book of life. And whenever uh, they pass away, the Apostle Paul uh, says to be absent from the flesh uh, is to be present with God. I mean, ha, my, I'm glad that we've got something to look forward to. Amen. And I think of a lot of these old songs, you see, just like we sang. Uh, uh, my, uh, where we'll never grow old. We'll never have to worry about that. Uh, yeah. uh, whenever we leave here. Why? Uh, uh, because he said uh, that we'll have a new body. One in the likeness of Jesus. Jesus will never grow old. We will have a new body. A glorified body. Uh, my, I uh, will never grow old. <laughs> Another songwriter come along and he wrote, When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. Uh, what a day, what a day that will be. <laughs> you see, a place where there will be no more sickness, uh, no more sorrows. Uh, all your troubles are left behind. Uh, you're not going to bag them up and take them with you. He tells us even in this life, uh, he says, Cast your cares upon Jesus. Uh, because he cares for you. And you think of what a price that he paid. Uh, would he reject you after paying such a price? Uh, no, he would not. And so you see, if you'll ask him, he'll forgive you. He said, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. My, God's in the saving business. He's not in a business to destroy people. We destroy ourselves a lot of time because we reject uh, the goodness of God, the greatness of God, the mercy of God, and the grace of God. We reject that uh, and walk in our own ways uh, instead of giving in to Jesus. God says, It's not my will that any should perish, but that all should come to repent. <laughs> Whoo! That all should come uh, to repentance, you see. That's what it is whenever uh, you say, God, I'm sorry. 
Oh, I know it. you got to humble yourself down. And there's a lot of pride uh, that I'm talking to today. A lot of pride. What do you mean? I mean, we'll look up and we'll say, well, now, uh, God never did do nothing for me. I wonder who's taking care of you down through the years. I wonder who has given you air to breathe. Yeah. God did. I wonder uh, whenever that automobile, that tractor turned over uh, and you was uh, uh, in a dangerous situation that you should have got killed and you come through without a, a scratch. I wonder whose hand was up on you. Somebody been praying. You know, I thank God today for them old saints of God that prayed for me. Uh, why? Uh, because God kept His hand on me. And God will keep His hand on you. But you see, my, what are we going to do uh, with this life? You think about it. Now let's read a little more. He says, Wisdom rests in the heart of a man who has understanding, but that which is of the midst of the fool is made known. I didn't say that. God said that. Listen to it. He says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Righteous exalts a nation. Can't you remember? I, I, I remember back a few years ago uh, uh, when uh, uh, the president sent so many young people over in the Middle East uh, uh, to fight a battle over there in the middle of the desert. What happened? He called for prayer. And people flocked to the churches everywhere and began to pray and to seek the face of God. The war didn't last very long, very few days, and the battles were over. <coughs> Why? God sent a windstorm. The windstorm uncovered all of those mines that they had hid around there in the sands, uh, and the soldiers was able to uh, step in places and go and pick them up, take them out to get rid of them. And, uh, uh, and so you see, righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to people. Now look at the condition of America today. What, are, what have we got to brag about? Look at it. I, I know we say, well, it's the best country in the world. It is for a fact. I will agree. But you know, uh, where there is much Bible, there is much freedom. But where there is little Bible, there is little freedom. People, am I, wants to do away with the Bible. They want to do away with God. They don't want no part of it. And look where we're at. <coughs> no, we're not on the bottom, but we're getting close. <laughs> and so you see, today is the day of salvation. God is calling for people to repent. If there's ever a time that people ought to pray, it's right now. Why? Because we need somebody to stand up in Washington and say, Hey, people, it's time to turn back to God. Amen. To get away from the things of this world. People have got another God. That's their money. That's what they're interested in. That's what they're looking for. That's what they want. <coughs> and they're spending all their time trying to get a hold of it. For what? For somebody to steal? Somebody to rob you? Ha, ha, ha. You see, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Father, in the name of Jesus, reach down today. Touch these under the sound of our voice. Help us, God, to give them what you give to us. Heavenly Father, that they'll know that God is still God yet today. And we'll praise you for it. Father, save the lost. Heal the sick. Set the captives free. Deliver those in bondage. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you is our prayer until this time next week.